Waking up is hard. I've been trying to get a hang of this regaining consciousness thing for a couple decades now, but none of the alarm clocks out there seem to match the violence of being dragged into real life after just learning how to fly. But what if we lean into that violence? So here's the plan. In theory, if I get a punching bag and dunk a motion sensor in it and then connect it to a little computer board and then color in the rest of the bag with something squishy, squishy on, on the, the outside, outside and then something dense on the inside and then realize that my morning brain would definitely just unplug the whole thing. So then add a battery back up here, seal the whole thing up, top it up with a little top hat and then slap some LEDs on there and boop it with some mega vibe coating before taking it all apart and reassembling it a couple more times. I should end up with an almost unsnoozable exercise to deactivate alarm clock that allows me to torment my future self with just one press of a chat GPT coded button. That is, in theory. Let's be honest, objectively this idea is pretty simple. I mean this was supposed to be that super small project that you use to prove to yourself that you can actually create a thing to completion, but we all know how that usually goes. Anyhow, this is the cheapest punching bag I could find on Amazon two and a half years ago. Unlike the product photos, these bags actually get shipped to you completely empty, probably to prevent the smuggling of certain controlled substances, allegedly. Not to worry though, there's a whole catalog of YouTube videos on how to stuff a punching bag, but for this one, I decided to go with a traditional family recipe. To start, I'm going to toss in a couple cardboard pancakes to soak up all the extra juices, followed by a thin lining of foam to reduce knuckle warpage. From here, I think the goal is to concentrate the mass at the center of the bag and then surround it by more squishy things to absorb as much of each impact as possible. So with that in mind, I positioned three large Ziploc bags of extra cured concrete up the core of the bag while stuffing the in-between with the old clothes I found in a garbage bag at the edge of a parking lot. To top things off, I'll add in a couple of frozen briskets, a drizzle of wood glue to act as a binder, salt and pepper to taste, a bottle of coke to break down the fibers, a dash of garlic powder, the zest from one onion, a pinch of the good stuff for that umami kick, one stick of butter to lubricate, and an optional hint of lithium just to add a little bit of heat. Lastly, I'm going to finish things up with this transistor side dish, which you can make by simply poking a few holes around a 3-inch PVC pipe, looping some string through it, adding a couple layers of cardboard followed by two layers of plastic bags, and then packing it with more concrete, plus a drizzle of faucet juice, more concrete, and then bagging it up with enough tape to waterproof a pineapple. Now, if I just put a plain accelerometer in a punching bag, that would give way too much boring academic research vibes. But maybe if I build a little ring of LEDs, I could theoretically make a game where the target changes around the bag, and then your punch only scores if your hit lines up with the target. So I printed a funnel which clamps to the pipe, cut the bag lid into six equal slices, packed the module in with even more clothes, printed a hamster wheel, and spread a layer of silicon and gallium nitride around the outside while moisturizing my lungs with a healthy dose of flexi perfume, then bolted it to the top along with this squishy TPU diffuser ring, and finally it was time for the electronics. To test that the electronic components could potentially do what I wanted them to do, I threw together this LED bubble level thing which sorta worked, which obviously means that this whole project has to work. I mean, just think, think about it. it. I then spent way too many hours learning that Macs have this garbage feature where they slip in hidden files when copy pasting things, which is not compatible with these silly audio modules. Anyways, after banging my head on it a bit more, I finally got all the electronic components talking to each other, but now we need to teach the onboard computer to recognize which direction an impact comes from. So I recorded some sample data and check it out. I can sort of visualize it with a bit of code. Because this is a three-axis accelerometer, we've got the different axes of acceleration plotted, ignoring the vertical axis for now. To merge the forward, back, and side-to-side -side axes together, we convert to something the higher-ups might call polar coordinates. So for example, if I punch from this angle, the sensor picks up a little bit of left-to-right acceleration and a lot of forward-to-back acceleration. Using Pythagoras, we can calculate a value for the total magnitude or amount of acceleration in this direction. And then we can use a little bit of trigonometry to figure out what angle the sensor accelerated at. This allows us to generalize our impact detection algorithm to work on punches from any angle. I also made use of another tidbit from some high school calc class to detect the peaks of these magnitude waves. If you imagine a little dude walking on this data line, if he was rating the steepness of the ground, as he passed over the peak of the hill, he would say that at some point he went from going uphill 
to flat ground, and then to downhill. In the code, we can calculate the steepness value as the change in magnitude over a small time frame. And when the slope crosses from a positive upward value to a negative downward value, then we've reached a peak. There's a bunch of other stuff in the code which helps account for little blips and noise that might trick the peak detection system, and then even more code which fails to calculate the altitude of the impact on the bag. But we're not gonna talk about that. Now time to hang it next to my bed. You might think that a couple simple eye bolts in the ceiling would suffice, but I could already feel the project scope just creeping through the fibers of my brain. So I built this big frame thing, screwed it into the ceiling, and then ordered a bunch of LiDAR sensors on AliExpress. To finish things off, I made up a couple sound effects and programmed in some basic game mechanics to have the target change positions. I did tell it to add a bit of fanciness, which mostly prevents the game from choosing a new target that's more than 120 degrees from the previous target, or which forces the punter to cross the back of the bag. I also added this snazzy gradient sort of thing so you can more easily find the new target if it's on the opposite side of the bag. And it was while testing these features that I came across a bit of a problem. If you punch the bag hard enough at the right time in the swing, something would wiggle and cause a little power dip, which means the board momentarily dies, which means the alarm turns itself off. It's something to do with the magnetic charging connection wiggling just enough to trigger the battery to power cycle. Freezes. The voltage dips and does that, so... That's not great. I can't turn it off. Which is so much fun. Now at this point, I should have just moved on, made this video, and just not told you about it. But that just leaves Morning Me highly vulnerable to bypassing the alarm by giving the charging cable a jiggle. Which kind of defeats the whole point of the battery. So the battle continues. I already had around 600 microfarads of capacitance on my 5 volt rail, but it seemed that needed an upgrade, so I bumped it up by exactly a million percent. For context, a capacitor stores electric potential energy, kind of like how a dam stores water, sort of. If you imagine I have a small stream of water spinning a water wheel, and the stream stops, the wheel will also stop. But if I have the stream going into this dam, well then, if the stream stops, the dam can still power the wheel temporarily. That supercapacitor solution did solve the power bump issue, but the first problem that it created was that it obviously triggered the short circuit protection on the battery. The second problem was that without a way to cut power to the audio module, I couldn't consistently reset communication to it. So keeping things more or less or less simple, I downgraded the capacitance of the supercap and stuck the LEDs and audio module power through a relay. Okay, so the bag is sagging a little bit down here, which is perfectly normal, I think, um, but it is causing there to be a little bit of extra slack fabric at the top, uh, which I kind of wanted to tighten up. So I'm gonna raise the core module up, maybe three or two or three inches, um, just to tighten this up and just fill it out a little bit. Um, and then if you listen, there's something rolling around in there um, and I'm kind of worried that that's gonna move around and short something out. So I think I'm gonna have to kind of give this a little bit of an overhaul. Good news, we found out who was making that noise. I'm not really sure where that screw came from. For a while, it's been bothering me that the core is slightly slanted this way by like maybe one or two degrees. Uh, so I guess now's the time to fix it. Um, but to do that, I'm gonna have to dig out some of the material. It's kind of interesting to see what it's like inside there. And just like that, on to the next problem. But somehow the next big issue didn't really show up. Just some brain-induced feature requests and game updates. I added this little web interface which displays scores and configures game modes and when they start. It's currently set up to start the game at whatever time you set it to, and then it'll wait for two minutes, which is around enough time to drink some water and use the bathroom, and or strap on the cheapest boxing gloves on Amazon. If no impact is detected during that delay time, it starts playing these random notes that I just made up, until you punch it again.
if you hit it and then go back to sleep, it'll decrease the delay time by like 15 seconds and go off again until eventually it's just ringing off the hook. Oh, and each time the alarm goes off, the score resets to zero. So if you get a few good hits in, but then get overly snoozy, it'll all have been for nothing. And if you're wondering if it actually works in real life, well... So this morning was the first time that I used this thing for real. <laughs> and uh, I'm kind of annoyed to say that, yeah, it, it actually works. It sucks. I stayed up too late trying to fix one line in the code, and then I set the thing to start flashing at like 7.30 in the morning. It's kind of funny, all the thoughts and feelings that I expected to be fighting when I was waking up. Yeah, it was still a thing. And, uh, still sucks. I have this one bug where if you max out the hit count list, it, like, stops making sounds, and so you don't know whether it's working or not, and I just thought I would never get there. But turns out if you don't hit it very hard, because maybe you just woke up, you don't get that many points per hit. And so reaching that max capacity actually kind of happens. Which reminds me, I should mention the scoring starts with a baseline of three points per hit, which increases the harder you punch, the faster you respond to the target changing, and how accurately your hit lines up with the target angle. It maxes out around 100 points per hit. We came to fight. It's been over a week of using this now, and while it's not perfect, I'll say it has worked surprisingly well. At one point, I woke up and even tried to use the web page to bypass the game, and I don't know if it was a glitch or something, but it straight up woke me up two minutes later anyways, so now my subconscious doesn't even try to disable it anymore. So far, my groggy morning brain hasn't hacked its way out of this one, so I'd call that a temporary success. I got a couple other wakey uppy gadgets floating around my nightmares, so... If you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, it might give me a hint that I'm not just spewing ideas into the void. You know, technically, I could program this thing to simulate a Bluetooth keyboard.